start from there. We are the New York Knicks. I'm back. Back in the New York Ooh, Well, it's the Knicks. It is the New York Knicks podcast, episode 574, part of Dash Radio. Thank you for joining. Uh, I am Jay, and with me is Mark. How you doing, Mark? Good, good. We are, um, tonight is the NBA draft lottery. If you're listening, obviously you already know the results. I don't know the results yet. Jay does know the results. He's going to let me know the results on the show, and then we're going to talk more Knicks and M playoffs from there. Jay, I brought a mascot for the draft lottery. I know you're supposed to bring something like helpful for your team, right? Yeah. So I brought, if you can see it in the camera, a poop emoji. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like how it goes for us. Every goddamn draft lottery. That seems like how it's going to go for us. I have a little toy poop emoji. It represents everything the Knicks have given me in the last 20 years. <laughs> How are you doing, Jay? Uh, so you are pumped for this. I am pumped because I have to say, if the basketball gods are ever going to give us the number one pick in the draft, mm-hmm. it would be this year. It would be a year when the talent at the top, oh, there's a bunch of good players at the top, but it's really one of the weaker drafts we've had in a while. Um, weak to the point where a lot of Knicks fans are like, do we even need to draft anyone in the top with our 11th pick and blah, blah, blah. Um, the Knicks should definitely draft someone with the 11th pick. Uh, but if you draft in the top three, Jay, who would you even take? Let's Before we even get into this, Jay, like, let's, let's, pretending we might actually have a pick, mm-hmm. according to, according to uh, the mock draft on uh, Tankathon, they had the top three picks being a top three on the board, the top three picks being Chet Holgram, Jabari Smith, and pa- Paoli Bancherero. Um, and Jade and Ivy being fourth. Pa- fine! I can't pronounce anything. We For the thousandth episode of our show, I'll learn how to pronounce English. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, any thoughts? But if the Knicks got the number one pick in the draft, who would you take and who would you not take? I mean, I would probably take Chet, but I would be terrified. Chet is... On, he makes Kevin Durant look we, like not thin. He makes Kevin Durant look fat. Like he is just the skinniest guy. He is what seven foot. He has guard like skills as far as dribbling. He's supposedly really a good defender. Blocks a lot of shots. Um, he's a good rim runner. He would be. I mean, people like Mitch. Chet, and he also can shoot the three. He's, he'd be a lot better than Mitch. Is he? He'd be, I'd be happy to get a guy like that in the draft. Is he worth number one pick in a league that's going away from censors? I mean, is there anybody that you think is like a consensus number one pick? Well, there isn't. That's why uh, Jabari Smith is a power forward. If we actually moved on from Randall, Jabari Smith could back up Obi Toppin. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it would be funny that we were like, we got rid of Randall, Obi. Obi's like, yes, and we drafted someone else who's going to take your playing time. Wait, wait what? <laughs> Uh, and wouldn't that but, be the same thing with Banchero? Yeah, Banchero is uh, also a power forward. Two of the three guys are a power forward. Fourth is Jaden Ivey, who's a shooting guard. Who would pro- and he's kind of a like a he can play, he can do a he's kind of a in between a little bit. Um, but he'd be the exciting player. He'd be the kind of guy we'd want to get in this draft. I feel like. Right. I don't know. What do you think, Jay? And Jay's like, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I already know the results. No, Motherfucker. I, I, wait, wait, Martin. Martin. Yes. Could you, could you calm down? Because we don't know the results yet. Or Jay knows. I don't know. If you I don't know. know. The resu- okay. Nope. Why are you? Okay. You're just cursing because uh, just to fuck with me? No, because kids ruin everything and my mom's a complete jerk too. So there you go. <laughs> oh, okay. You're just speaking like the golden truth. 
Yeah. Uh, Martin bringing well, positive energy today. <laughs> what oh, I, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to make. Are we recording yet? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. We're on. Oh, nice. They heard it every. Good. It's on the internet. I hope my mom listens to this. <laughs> All right. What, 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 what happened with, the, with a very short, short synopsis? For a story. Happened. Recorder concert, old people don't know how to drive, can't get out of parking lot, has to have to take kids to ice cream. Mom has drama with her car, even though it's a nothing burger. Why did there, why is there a recorder con- concert? My son? Recorder. No, why, like, why do recorders exist? Oh, that, that's a great question. I said, why couldn't someone, because like, my wife goes, it's a simple instrument. And I said, but someone couldn't invent a better sounding instrument that's simple? Like, <laughs> what about like a, a three string guitar? There you go, or a one string guitar. One string guitar, screw it. I mean, it's got to sound better. I mean, it's horrible. Even the principal was like, This sounds like crap. <laughs> like, I'm sorry that you guys have to listen to the practice. <laughs> I just can't believe. Like, did Mark freeze? He did. Yeah, we lost. Him. Okay, I just thought he was very uh captured by the uh story we're doing like the uh tag team wrestling one co- co-host comes in the other one comes out oh there you go uh he just bowed out yeah. so did you so you know the results i definitely don't i do have juice on uh the celtics game tonight though oh yeah what, what, yeah what'd you bet? I, what did i i did a uh, parlay um you stacked a bunch what was that? You stacked. Yeah, them. three. Uh, yeah, they were doing like a special where they give you a thirty-three percent boost on a same game parlay. So I took, I just teased everything down. Boston plus fourteen and a half, under two thirteen and a half, and Jason Tatum twenty-five plus points. Okay. F- Fifteen pays forty. Yeah, I just wanted some action. It's not not a. Everyone's like this guy doesn't bet like a real man. I always bet like five bucks, but then I'll stack like twelve parlays. And have you hit one? I I hit one, and it it was like uh, I, I it wasn't as bold as my other ones. It was it was like uh, I think I won like forty bucks on five. Gotcha. I did one the other day. The I, I stacked so many, it was like uh, it would have paid like twenty five hundred dollars or something. <laughs> I, I think I hit like nine out of twelve, but uh, there's always that yeah. one guy who just nah, you gotta. Completely. It's such a sucker bet, those parlays, but they're fun. They're fun. They're fun. I figure, like, you know, five bucks, I have fun with it. So, did you guys? So, you guys started the podcast, but did you talk about anything? Like, did he make his predictions or anything? We were just going over the top four uh, guys. Like, like if the Knicks got the number one pick, would you take? Who would you take? I have no freaking clue. All I know is I will say this: this is going to be the last year where the draft is normal. Because I think this name, image, and likeness stuff is going to really mess with ba- college basketball. Oh, you I think, think it's going to be weird, to like the uh, the G League and stuff. Well, not just that they're getting money to pay college, like Shaq did. No, they're getting <laughs> they're get, they're getting all these endorsement deals. That's why uh, I think that's why Jay Wright quit at Villanova, mm. and all these coaches are bitching about it because my Miami is going to end up paying people to play down there. You know. But oh, yeah, yeah. I guess if they do that, then you could have like even a more super team. teams. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you have enough boosters, kind of a, it's already kind of an issue. It's, I mean, well, now, now it's out in the open. <laughs> yeah, Kentucky's like a freaking NBA yeah. farm at this point. Exactly. Well, you, you watch. Iona's going to be like this hotbed because you got a, uh, um, what's his name, uh, the cheater guy, uh, Rick Pitino, former Nick coach. Mm. So. So uh, who are who are the top four guys that they're saying? I, I have I you know I actually watched the tournament, but I don't know who's coming out. Uh, I'll say European dude. <laughs> Chet, Chet Holmgren is uh, what most places have as the number one pick. Yeah, I, I do have a prediction on the draft lottery, and I have no idea. Okay. So I think that the Cavs somehow are going to luck out with the first pick, and LeBron will go there. That was Mark's uh, prediction too. That's funny. <laughs> he said the, he messaged me the same thing because today. the league is fixed. <laughs> I mean, usually it's if a a team loses a big star, they'll win the lotto. I mean, it happened with uh, well the Pelicans, the, the league also owned, uh, but, right? But then it, it happened with um, uh, Houston when uh, when San Antonio Harden left. 
Uh, sort of. Remember San Antonio lucked out because they tanked that one year and they got uh, Tim Duncan. Yeah, yeah, but that wasn't really like a start leaving. That's um, true. Okay. It happened. I'm back. It happened to our my misery down. knocked you out. <laughs> Your misery Orlando recorder. Ones. Okay. Yeah. So we're, recorder we're past, sucks. We're done with the recorders. We're done with the recorders. I, I also re- I also realized the reason my son didn't have a recorder concert because because of COVID. So uh, anyway, uh, feel free to. Just, so you know, you and I have the same prediction. It sounds like about Cleveland getting the first pick and LeBron going there. Yes, yes. I, I thought it made a lot of sense. You guys might probably talked about this, but uh, it makes so much sense that Cleveland, who has the worst odds tonight, will win the number one pick, and LeBron will be like, I guess I'm done in L.A. I'm going back to Cleveland, and uh, it'll, like, they'll play another, like, I'm coming home video. And uh, Oh, God. Well, that's only for Melo. We should um, we should predict how many – so what the Knicks are, are – if the, everything played out perfectly, where are they supposed to land? 11. Well, sorry. If they're, if they, if they play out as is, as the odds are supposed to be 11. Yes. Okay. Um, I will say the Knicks will then get 12. Yeah, that would be the Knicks have since Patrick Ewing, the Knicks have only stayed where they are or moved back in the draft. They have never moved up. They've never benefited since Patrick Ewing, since Patrick Ewing. And Ewing was a huge benefit, but that was was frozen envelope fix. And somehow exactly. they have the third worst luck in the draft. It is the third worst luck? What yeah. do you mean? So there's two teams that have had worst luck th- through the draft lottery? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Who? Like Sacramento or something? I think Minnesota. Okay, I could see that. Didn't Minnesota get Towns with the number one pick when they won the lottery? Yeah. yeah what about... Um... But that's their... Uh, they had the worst record, so... They didn't okay, move. they didn't. They didn't move. They didn't move. Yeah. They were where they were supposed to be. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that maybe Atlanta. I can see. Atlanta. Wait, also no. Wait, no. Wait, and Minnesota also got um. What's his name? Garnett. The, no, well that too. But that way he wasn't one pick. Didn't they get Wiggins? Wiggins was, Wiggins a, was a number. Cleveland traded. Cleveland drafted him and traded him on draft day. Who did they That's get? True. There was one year they got a no, guy. No, the though. guy, the they, Canadian guy, right? No, the guy they just got a, like uh, what's his name? Uh, he was just in the playoffs. He was awesome. Edwards. Edwards, Anthony Edwards. He was the number one pick also. Didn't they have the worst record again? Screw it. The Knicks have had the worst record. They don't get it when they have the worst record. <laughs> I don't know. It's just bullshit. I, I don't, no one has had worse luck than Knicks. The Knicks had the worst record, and Zion and Ja do not play for the Knicks. Those Zion doesn't really play for anyone. Um, but uh, oh, That's true. Whatever. The Knicks always move back. So the Knicks going into this, and we're not going to pull, we're not going to delay this too much. The Knicks currently have a 17% Sorry, the uh, a nine four point four percent chance of being a top three pick, and a uh, a two percent chance of getting the number one overall pick. Never. So those odds sound in the Knicks' favor. Um, Jay, do you want to? So I was saying who the Knicks should take. Um, currently, uh, Martin. Currently, the top three guys projected are a center who looks like you need. He looks like he's he he's insanely thin. He's rail thin. Um, a center, and then there's two power forwards at uh, two and three. Would just be would be interesting if the Knicks got the top pick and pa- draft the power forward to increase their. Lo- and then they didn't move Randall, and they had Randall, Obi, and this new power forward all the same roster. The East's big, man. East's the big. Um, but anyway, the Knicks are unlikely to have this issue of figuring out who to take in the top three because they will not be in the top three. Jay, does it? Do you want to start at 15 and work your way down? Oh, is Drew Timmy coming out? He's going to be like one of those college good players and nothing else. I haven't, I haven't seen him on any mock draft. He's another Gonzaga guy. Now I know who Holmgren is. Holmgren's pretty good, but he's a, I don't know. He's he's another one of those guys that are good in college and never going to be good in the NBA. I don't, yeah, I don't, I see him. He, he's rail thin. I don't really know when you put like really bigger centers against him. He also has like this guard ability, to like dribble, but it's not really like. Could you really see him having really guard skills in the NBA? I'm actually he, looking at no. Uh, Coburn might be good. He might be one of those like, but they don't need someone like him. Yeah, I think like um, Chet is going to be like the better version of Porzingis. Is still good, but not necessarily for this NBA. I know Chet's supposed to be able to shoot threes, but he probably won't shoot threes at the level you want him to. No. Yeah, he's not like he's not Durant. He's just this like he's tall. He does a lot of stuff, but uh. Remy I'm Martin's sh- is Remy Martin coming out too? I I don't even know who Remy Martin. Is. Rod, uh, Rod Harper Jr. Did he? 
I thought he was a senior. He's at Rutgers. He was pretty good. All right. So 14. All right, go ahead. Okay. So okay. So right now, um, 15 would be the uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers, right? There's only 14 in the draft guy who's done oh, four, 600 14 episodes is... of a basketball podcast. All right. So, so so start backwards and let's see if they and then tell us if they landed where they're supposed to. Okay. Right? Yeah. So 14th 14th pick. 97% chance uh Cleveland getting it. They got it. Uh, oh, you really you really don't no, no drum roll, Jay? I mean, it's How was the how was the telecast? Did you watch the telecast? Yeah, I mean, they milked it as much as they could. They brought in a bunch of the the top three prospects. They brought in. They announced every single representative from every team, and like, then they uh, they had Perkins say his bull crap, and then uh, you guys don't like him. I like him. I don't like. I don't. I don't. I don't love Perkins. I like Perkins. I like when he's on PTI. They have him on PTI sometimes. Mm-hmm. Jay, who 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 is repping the Knicks? West. Was it uh, Worldwide West? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. I thought I, I right. saw them announce that the other day. Okay. Worldwide West. Well, did he use? He his made his one. He made he made his his annual appearance. Okay. And we won't see him. He'll go into witness protection for the next twelve months. So, I mean, just like all the Knicks front office, supposedly are doing things. We just have no idea what they're doing. Okay. Who's who's thirteen? Jay. Thirteenth pick. Charlotte had a ninety-two point nine percent chance of getting this pick. And, and they, they say to 13. And they got it. Okay. Right. So 12 is the first pick where the Knicks could be. This would mean did the Knicks – actually, they can't move They can't move to 12 now because if the team – the only way they could move to 12 is if, two, if one of the two teams behind them jumped them. So they're not at 12. Unless, wow. the, unless the 12 team jumped them. The 12-11. Yeah. Yeah, because the Knicks are 11. Who was 12? So 12 would have been uh, the Clippers. Clippers, 86% chance at number 12. They do have uh, like an 8% chance of moving into the top four, which would move the Knicks back to 12. Okay, so Jay, I thought he was going to say they, they, they moved up. Um, Martin, are we getting are we going to move down? Are we going to move gonna, down? I'm going I'm I'm to stick with my original prediction that they got 12. Okay, I'm going to say the Knicks end up at 11, which just seems like the most obvious thing. Okay, they did not move up. So what happened, Jay? They moved back to 23rd. They traded out? <laughs> no, just, you can't uh, trade out of the draft lottery. <laughs> that would be so funny. If you, you could. <laughs> I, you, you know, I don't think you could actually trade. I don't think the, you could trade right now. It's probably cold yeah, and frozen. Yeah, yeah. But. The, the, Knicks yeah. tra- the Knicks trade 100 of their ping pong balls. <laughs> for two, two, two second round picks. It'd be great if you could actually first trade time them. they actually trade use some balls. All right. It, yeah, it would, wouldn't that be awesome if it was like um, also the Knicks um, in the trade gave up two ping pong balls. <laughs> All right, so the Clippers stayed at twelve. Okay, right. so eleven. So, did they move up? Wait, the Clippers. Hang on. So the the Knicks are either at eleven or they move up. Um, right. There's no chance the Knicks moved up. Martin, what do you think? No way. The Knicks have a 9.6% chance of moving up. A 77.6% chance of 11. You know how I know they did not move up? Mm-hmm. I have no text. I have no, I have nothing <laughs> to indicate. That's sort of oh, cheating. Oh, wow. Well, no, I, 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 like, I, I would just have heard it. Jay also got in the show when before the show started. He was like, hey, what's up? Jay would not have said, hey, what's up? Jay would have been like, no, hey. No poker face. I don't think, Jay, if the Knicks had gotten the number one pick, do you mm-hmm. think you could have hit it with your number your, And I, I don't know yet. Maybe they did. Do you think you have a good enough poker face? I think I could have done it. I think he could have done it. Yeah. Okay. See, Jay, Jay, right there. He would have done it for the bit. He's dedicated to the bit. But I didn't okay. have to do it because they're 11. Ah! ah! Fuck! <laughs> fuck! 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 That's not even tradable. <sighs> did anybody move up? Let's let's look at it. So just go through this a little faster now. Number 10 would have been Washington. Did they move up, Jay? Uh, number ten is Washington. Okay, number nine would be the uh, it would the Lakers pick, but it goes to the it goes to the uh, Pelicans, and I bet the Pelicans move to number one because that would be a good storyline to keep Zion, um, Zion with the Pelicans. Did the Pelicans move up, Jay? They did. Oh, oh my God! Holy shit! I hate the NBA. <laughs> it is so goddamn rigged. I mean, it really is. 
I, I just admit it. This whole draft lottery thing has been rigged from goddamn day one. The NBA hates the Knicks, and they just want some good goddamn storyline. So number nine is the Spurs. Oh. Wait, the number nine is the – oh, yeah, the number nine is the Spurs. Mm-hmm. So they moved down from what? They moved from this... eight to nine. Okay. 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 So uh, the Pelicans, we don't know where they are. Okay, number seven. Number. So number eight. Number, number eight is – so who's number eight, Jay? Number eight is the Pelicans. Uh, they moved up one. They moved up one. Wait, they didn't move up one. I don't know. You're the one reading the odds. Oh, right? okay. I got it wrong. I got it wrong. Jesus I forgot. Christ I missed. Life. I didn't. I'm a moron. Okay. So it was it was San Antonio at nine, Pelicans at eight. No one moved up. Okay. That would have been a good storyline. Anyway, NBA, you're not rigged. I don't know what I'm saying. I was yeah. probably drunk. Don't don't sue us. Seven. <laughs> Seven Sacramento. The Sacramento move up, Jay. They need some help. Sacramento moved up. Okay. Uh, Seven is the Blazers. Okay, so the Blazers did not move up. Um, number five would have been Indiana. Who's at five now? Did Indiana move up? They're six. Okay, they did not move up. They moved back. Number four would be OKC, who has been just piling on with these draft picks. They have so many goddamn draft picks, and their team is still terrible, but this might be their last terrible season. They move up. So number five is Detroit. Okay. Wow, Detroit got fucked. Um, they would have been three. Yeah. Um, number, okay, just who tells the top three, Jay? I'm, I'm tired. I can't do this. So number four is the Kings. Okay. Three is the Rockets. Oh, Rockets' worst record. Two I've, is, I've had that happen to us. Two is the Thunder. Two is the Thunder. And, that and so that one is the Magic. Wow. Wow. All right. They they deserve the first pick. That team is horrible. Isn't the Magic the perfect team to pick number one? Because they will draft a center that will not be very good. Like an overrated center. They just, they have a history of drafting overrated center. Well, they drafted Shaq back well, in the day. Oh, Shaq. And no, Dwight, but like... Prime Dwight was really good. And Dwight no, Howard yeah. had one, that one really good year. 100% right. But then they also drafted like Jonathan Isaac, Mo Bamba. They had a, more recently, they drafted a lot of big men that have turned out not to work out. True. Um, but yes... Historically, Shaq and Dwight Howard are off. But is the first pick this year really that prized? Like, it's not that great of a draft, right? I mean, no, we were saying it's one of the weaker drafts. I mean, there's going to be a couple players that are going to be awesome. We just have no idea. It's not like other years where you're like, oh, definitely like guy. surefire guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, right so now, the ringer, sorry. the ringer no, has the Knicks drafting Jalen Duran, and uh, they do a good job of doing pluses and minuses. And so the minuses for Jalen Duran is off-ball defense, simple things like boxing out and not getting into uh, foul trouble, lacking passing accuracy, struggles with shooting, and he doesn't sounds have like a Thibodeau good, guy. He doesn't have a good back to the basket game. So isn't that like just everything? What? what? <laughs> and you know that that his position is center. So you really want a, a center that can't rebound. Or post up. Or post up. Like the basic, what does he do to get like, what does he do? Right. He is a good shot blocker. Okay. That's, don't we have a guy that does that already? And we have a, two guys that can block shots. Yeah. And he is a, a good interior finisher. So he doesn't post up, but he, I guess he's like an so old. So we have Obi Toppin who yeah. can do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, I think we have enough guys that can do that. Maybe if that's your, what, I mean, this guy might be a lot better than, than what they're describing, but if that's if that's who's available at center, we could just pass and take someone in the second round. What? No, trade it for Donovan Mitchell. Straight up, they'll do it. I, I think, I, Mark, you made, you brought up a good point today. He's the youngest guy in the draft, so Knicks fans will go nuts about his potential for the next five years. Yeah. So, the uh, Mark, I don't know if you how closely you follow the Knicks. The Knicks, the Knicks Twitter, Knicks Twitter, where they – they fetish they fetishize the age of a player when he's drafted and there's always like oh my god he's so young can you like you don't know how good when he when he hits puberty he's going to be amazing we should get Nelakina back yeah he, we can't yet though cuz he's still playing so um, mike i'm going to call it here uh, the Knicks are going to draft uh, probably that guy and Terry Eason is going to be the guy that they should have drafted 
Aeson is as that eighteen. Is that the guy? Ne- is that the next pick after? Is no, that the five picks after. Uh, according to the mock on uh, on Tankathon, he's eighteen. Uh, he's a power forward also. Which, if you move Randall, you what you could use another power forward. Why not take a? So the next guy after him, according to the the mock here, is another center. But then there's a shooting guard, Johnny Davis. I feel like the Knicks could use some help. Knicks could help help with the guard position. So, yeah, the uh, Tankathon has Eason at 15, and the Ringer has him at 16. But um, why why do you think Eason's the guy? Well, look at the pluses for Eason, and you might see some overlap with the negatives for the guy they think the Knicks is going to draft. Why? To let us know, Jay. What who are, what are the pluses? Gritty defender. He can get steals. He draws a ton of fouls. His shooting got a lot better in his second year. He's athletic, uh, and he has a desire to facilitate. I mean, all those things really just don't sound like a Nick. <laughs> right. <laughs> sounds. Yeah, sounds I don't know who. I mean, for a while we were talking about Ty Ty, who Ty Ty was like at some point ranked like number seven or eight. Now he's like ranked nineteen on the, on the mock. At least this mock I'm looking at. He's fallen off a cliff, uh, but he's also not really a point guard. Um, but uh, I'm voting for a guard. It, that was my, my overall vote. Jay Shady wants to know what we think of Trevor Keels. Um, I wish I followed Barton. You follow college basketball well enough to know who that is? Not well, not well enough. He's, the guys I mentioned, like when I got in here, I didn't have the names in front of me. That's the name I don't know. He's a shooting guard projected to go in the second round. Where did he go to college? He went to uh, Duke. Okay. I mean, anyone in the second round, we're just going to have no idea. But uh, we're yeah, not full, full you know what? We're, we're not. I'm just going to make a summary of this. It's another mid-round, useless waste of time pick that's going to do nothing. Um, you don't know the Knicks fans. We go insane over our second-round picks. Yeah, don't even get people started on quickly. And oh, well, what? Uh, we're we're going to go back to Ronaldo Balkman, McBride. And no, Sims. our more recent picks. Knicks fans think every pick, every pick in the second round is like a Hall of Famer, a two. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think but, like, we have Deuce, who's been good on Deuce defense. Deuce McAllister. Yeah, um, he's been good on defense, but like hasn't shown that much on offense. He's shown some things in like in the in uh he Deuce, Deuce McBride. He's he's shown some oh, things Deuce in McBride. The, uh, Deuce, looked, I just took a Deuce. Whatever. I mean, yes. Nick fans. He he shows things in G League, and Nick fans are like, oh my god. Why even bring in another point guard when we got this guy? And there's some guy we have this stashed in Europe, and they're like, oh, my God, he's playing seven minutes a game in Europe. He's the second coming. You are not the Spurs. We don't know how to pick those types of people. No. I mean, maybe the guy will end up being good. Who the hell knows? He's not coming to the NBA next year. He'll, he's going to spend more time developing in Europe. I think the Knicks should send all their draft picks to Europe to develop because that would probably be a better system than what they currently Better have. than the G League. It really would make more sense. Just send the guy to Europe, let him learn how to play basketball, then bring him back here. I don't understand the appeal. Like, who, how many good players have come out of the G League? Seriously. Like, how many? Um, Miami, Miami, two of their starting players. In the, are yeah, that's, the two. that's two. That's Rap- two. The Raptors have gotten a bunch of players out of the G League. There are a lot of good players that come out of the G League. Well, a jury, right? But the, but the Raptors also have a lot of good, like, foreign guys. Right? Yeah. I mean, but the, the Raptors. Like the Heat, there are certain teams that really use the G League to develop players and really scout for talent there. And there's a bunch of good players in the G League, because um, a lot of not every guy is ready for the NBA right when they leave college. Oh, I, I agree years. with you. I mean, I it used know. to used to be everyone's in college for four years, and so they really had a chance to develop. Now you're like, hey, you got like a couple rebounds a game in your freshman year, just take, go to the NBA and figure it out there. Well, I, I was saying to Jay before you came you came back is that I think the whole name, image, and likeness thing is yeah. going to really screw up drafting after this year if it hasn't already. Because I think Why? I think the whole system is going to be really hard to figure out. Guys are going to be paid now. There's also gambling behind the scenes. Not that there wasn't gambling before, but I don't know. I just feel like there's so many things going on now. And college basketball is going to be weird. Like uh, the teams that you're used to being good. I don't see Villanova being good for a while. Because they're not going to figure out how to pay their players. Well, Jay Wright's gone, right? What's their name recognition? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I feel like the guys in college, most of them don't make the NBA. 
They should all be allowed to make money off their names. There's, there's just no issue with them making money. I don't mind them making money. I honestly don't care because they were making money anyway. Now it's yeah. all out in front of it's. It's like legalizing marijuana. Everyone was whoever wanted to do marijuana was doing marijuana. But now they can really do it out in the open. Like, if you were if you were good at coding and you were in college and you wanted to take a side gig doing some kind of coding job, no one would prevent you from doing that. Having, right. I mean, it's absurd. These guys are like they're working forty hour a week jobs playing in like oh, it's, college it's basketball. It's not easy. And, yeah. They, so like, let them but they do money. get a free. They do get a free ride though. No, they work a full time job to, to get this. It's not a free ride. It's their their compensation, basically. Oh, I, I hear you. I mean, but... do I'm I'm gonna guess the three of us. None of us work even close to as hard as a college football player works. Uh, maybe except the kicker. <laughs> yeah, maybe not the kicker. But uh, generally speaking, any of these guys work a lot harder than we do. Um, yeah. And they and they also put their bodies at risk. So, I, 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 the, whatever. All the ones that go to class. Yeah, whatever. We're not, we're not here to talk about whether like, either way, this stuff is going on. Um, and I, I think that's great. Let them earn as much money as possible. And you're right, sure. though. It could, it could keep guys in college longer, but that's not a bad thing either because then maybe guys takes a little more time. But maybe to they'll develop. Yeah, yeah. sure. Because, like, it really, like, what sucks is that if you, uh, you declare too early and then you, like, sign an agent and then you're not drafted and you're kind of, you're kind of screwed, whereas it would be nice if you could be like, oh, you Something know what? to fall back on. Yeah, it's like you'd be like, hey, you know what? I wasn't drafted. I, no one wanted me in the first two rounds. Let me just go back to college, continue playing in college, so forth. Yeah, that's fair. But uh, anyway, so um, anything else you want to say about the Knicks, the Knicks in the draft, or should we move on to the playoffs? Well, let's move on to the playoffs. Okay. So uh, The draft is boring. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hate oh, to be such a naysayer. It's boring. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll be pretty obsessed with this. The one thing I have to say oh. is my, my nightmare scenario is – I think Leon Rose likes to, he's in the last two drafts, he's made these like trades. He likes to be cute. He's like, I can't just take guys with the picks I have. Let me see what I can do with this. Oh, I'm playing 4D chess. I'm so smart. And usually that means you're just doing dumb shit. And the next two last two draft picks haven't been terrible. Right? They've been decent. They've been pretty good. But uh, my fear here really is that he's going to trade the number 11 pick for something stupid. Like for like a thing of like a handful of magic bees. He's gonna be like, I swapped the number eleven pick for three second round picks. And they're they're top fifty eight projected, but there's three of them. And like, oh my god, it's gonna be like I just don't want him to trade out. I do. Here's Why? the thing. Why? Because it does, an eleventh pick isn't gonna matter for them. It'll matter Why? for a team that knows what they're doing. I don't think I don't. Know, you have confidence in this organization knowing what the hell it's doing. You have to to. To win an NBA, you have to nail draft picks. You have to nail at least one draft pick. And if you're going to nail a draft pick, you have better odds of nailing the number 11 pick than you have of nailing the number 12 pick and so down the, ro- the line. Like, I guess. So, you know what you have to nail? Not giving a contract to a third or fourth op- – a first uh, player contract to a third, fourth string type player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, we do a lot of dumb stuff here. But, like, if with the number 11 pick – there are plenty of guys. I mean, the league MVP was drafted like 41st overall. So, wait, did Jokic win it again this year? Yeah, he did. He was 41st overall. Um, Donovan Mitchell, who we're dying to get, was drafted I think, 12 or 13 overall. Yeah, but we this... didn't draft him. No, but <laughs> yes, that's what I'm obviously. trying to say. Well, I'm just saying the the only way to the only way to correct this shit is for this front office to figure out who the right pick is, and it's the odds are just better the higher the pick. So why why trade out? You you have everyone else on the board. Just draft at eleven. Hopefully you nail the guy, and that guy could be at least a starter, if not an all star. But why? What do you? What do you? What's going to happen if you trade out? It's going to get worse. Trade out into the next year's draft. They're going to suck next year. They're going to suck. Who's taking Julius Randle? Who? Who wants him? So uh, Jay and I have been arguing about this. Um, I'm saying Randle has no value um in the trade market. Jay, I thinks- agree. Jay thinks there's some value. Who? Okay. Jay? Yeah, I think there's a little bit of value there. Who is Why? Who, wh- where does he fit? He fits what? W- with um he fits with Portland. He doesn't fit with Dallas. My my whole thing was Dallas and clearly he does not fit with Dallas. Well, I remember not that long ago we were like, "Oh, I hope Dallas tanks so we can get their pick." This is like a year or two ago, right? Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden they have a really le- good legitimate shot 
I still think Golden State will beat them, but they have a good chance against Golden State. I mean, they have a decent they chance going to the finals. Like, by the way, the Jalen Brunson stuff is over. Whether you want Jalen Brunson or not, he is not, not leaving him. Dallas. It's no way. Over. They, right, they, they've, so. they've shown enough this year that they're bringing this team back and trying to try to make it better. They're not going to get rid of Jalen. Honestly, gonna, like, like they may, they may run the same thing back. Remember, this team wasn't the way it was the whole year. Right, and also Jalen Brunson. Yeah, they, uh, they said. How do we make this team better? Porzingis leaves. Oh, look how much better we are without Porzingis. And nobody's talking about how Hardaway's out. Like, yeah, Timmy yeah. Moore also. And they're still in the conference finals. So, yeah, they're, they're keeping Brunson. He's a huge part of the team. Well, um, he's, a, he's a free agent, so technically he could leave. And people are going to make the connections with the Knicks. It doesn't matter. He's not going to be like, hmm, what do I want to do? The Knicks have been dog shit for the last 20 years. Oh, and I'm playing against a guy, I'm playing next to the guy who might be the best player in the NBA, who might very soon be the best player in the NBA. He's going to stay in Dallas and play next to Dante. It's, like it's, a, it's yep. an easy choice for him. So who do you think, uh, who do you think, uh, like, what do you think happened? Do you think it was more Dallas is really good or Phoenix had one of the biggest choke jobs in playoff history? I think Chris Paul's old. Yeah, but well, what, I mean, what that's true. Devin but... I think that's just what it was. I think, but I think he just too. fizzled out at the end. You know, or you know, he got yeah, hurt. But, we don't know it. But that's fair. Devin Booker also sucked. What happened to Devin Booker? Did he? He got end? hurt. He got hurt though. We forget that he got hurt in that first round. He yeah. did, but he was playing games thereafter. Yeah, he was. He seemed yeah, fine. Like that's for the true. First six games of that series. Um. Also, Phoenix, when you build yourself like your your third best player is DeAndre Ayton, and you're like. Can't put him on the court. That doesn't sound good. I'm gonna uh, say. I'm, I'm, with you. I'm gonna say it was the Kardashians. The Kardashian theory. The Kardashian jinx. Please explain, Jay. So here's a list of players that have banged a Kardashian. <laughs> and tell me if you think allegedly. That... Go on. No, no, they've all banged the Kardashian. Oh, whatever. And, Just go. And uh, and tell me if you think they have uh, overachieved or underachieved in the playoffs. James Harden, Ben Simmons, <laughs> Jordan Clarkson, Devin Booker, Chris Humphreys, Chandler, say Humphreys. Chandler yeah. Parsons, and Lamar Odom. Um, yeah, is, that's, is, that's pretty legit. <laughs> is, now, is Lamar Odom alive? The only one, the <laughs> only one that actually had a good playoff run was Lamar Odom, but then he literally died and came back to life afterwards. So. <laughs> We'll add them to the list, but everybody else, as soon as they start dating a Kardashian, playoffs are done. Yeah, so we should hire the Kardashians to go, like, I don't know, like, go out with, uh, who do we want to take down? Whoever the Knicks, I mean, there's so many of them, just hire one for each round. By the way, it, with uh, for process of elimination, the Knicks beat the Celtics twice this year. Process of elimination, the Cel if the Celtics win this whole title, the Knicks are the best team in the NBA. The Knicks crushed the Mavs both times they played, too. Yeah, the Knicks really, like, everyone should be like, we wish we were, I mean, we're making it to the finals, but we wish we were as good as the Knicks. Well, I remember the first game of the year was against the Celtics, and everyone was like, holy crap. Like, and it, But it felt like a playoff game, and they were going all out. And Well, it turned, out, it turned out the Knicks were going all out. The Celtics were like, yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter that much. Andrew said I need to bang a connection <laughs> no one had to prove my Sorry, theory. No. Well, you just want my life to crumble? Huh. Wait, what, what, what would you say? Andrew said, I need to bang a Kardashian to prove my theory, but I don't really want my life to crumble. Maybe one of you guys can test that out. Yeah, I mean, you should just ask Jay, ask your girlfriend, is this okay? It's just an experiment. This is for science. <laughs> I just which Jay, which, which Kardashian are you going to bang? Chris. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um, the fact that I knew a name is bad enough. <laughs> you, were, you were pretty fast on that one, too. I, uh, I, so I knew you were going to ask the question at some point. I was like, just say the old bag. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I, I think this was just an epic. I mean, I think Dallas is, is really good, but it was four minutes left in the half before Paul Booker or Aiton scored. And it was just, it was like an Aiton dunk, I think. Uh, that was, it, Two points between the three of them with four minutes left in the half. Yeah, it, it was completely absurd how much they fell apart. And I guess the Suns are, uh, they're not, I thought they were really deep. They're not when it comes to the playoffs. Um, because they're not really using their bench. And uh, it's hard also to like, like say like, 
Chris Paul's our best or second best player when the guy's like 37 years old. Plus, yeah, Chris I, Paul. Yeah, I think we're done with Chris Paul now, right? How about Patrick Beverly? Holy crap. He really uh, blasted him. So Dallas was playing four ex Knicks and two guys that they got with the other ex Nick they had. So it's basically if the Knicks drafted Luca, this is what the Knicks would be. Yeah, that's pretty much. And they, if they, and they got, they hired Jason Kidd as their coach, which they probably should have because he coached them in the fifty-four win season. He he coached a hell of a hell of a season. Yeah, he's had, a, he's had an interesting coaching career. Yeah, it started um, off a little shaky, and he's he's been really good since. I mean, look, very shaky. I mean, the, with the Nets and the Bucks, but like it's working out well now. Yeah, uh, but really, like the Porzingis, like as much as we loved Porzingis or pretend like thought he was gonna be great, he was in the way. He was a problem there. He was. So if, if they didn't make that trade, they're they're not in the conference finals, right? No, no way at all. No way. That is that is the biggest difference of all. It's just like didn't we say that was a great trade at the time? I felt like we said that. Yeah, I don't think like uh, as Bill Simmons was talking about today. He's like he's like the biggest trade at the deadline was the Porzingis trade. We yeah, didn't realize yeah. it at the time, but that was like the uh, they trade for like if you said to someone at the time like, hey, this Porzingis trade might get them to the finals, you'd be like. Well, who did they get for Porzingis? And you'd be like, it doesn't matter. Just they got rid of him. I mean, Dinwiddie's been awesome. And... Din- he's a good player, man. The Nets should have never let him go. But he's also like, he's not an amazing. He's a good scorer. He's. I I think if they need if they got literally no one for uh, Porzingis, they might still be here. <laughs> Andrew thinks it's a uh, Theo Pinson effect. This is his third straight team where they really overachieved when he got there. What is the deal with him getting a spot on rosters just to be a cheerleader? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, who, who, who used to do that? That guy. Uh, Ask oh. Udonis Haslam. He's still getting paid. Oh, I'm thinking of a white guy. Haslam has uh, used to Haslam, do the, uh, hasn't uh, the played Celtics. serious minutes in like seven years. And he's still on the contract. I mean, at least hasn't played serious minutes for a long time. Like, Theo Pinson has never contributed to the NBA at all besides clapping. Yeah, apparently, he yeah. does it really well. Um, Didn't work for uh, Dallas. Uh, Matt, uh, Cowboys head coach, True. and former Giants head coach. So how you guys well, he about, clap. Uh, about Golden State Memphis. Oh, Golden State Memphis. What about that series? Yeah, I uh, think it's crazy that John ja Morant, when he's out, they still play really awesome. They have a really good record. Like regular season, they were great without him. It was like twenty-two they... and two without him, and they like they were a tough out without him in the playoffs too. I mean, they're really this is the model for the Knicks. I mean, obviously, it'd be great to have Jaw. But, like, the model really is they are just a well-coached – everyone – they have a lot of players – well, I, I, I guess uh, – uh, what's his name? It's pretty, pretty darn good also. Jackson. Jaron Jackson. But uh, either way, it's a bunch of pretty good players who all just play really well as a team. I think they might be the deepest team in the playoffs. Well, they were. Yeah. They were. Or they were. The deepest, deepest. I mean, they were, the, the, like, legit 10 deep. Right. So that's what the Knicks model should be. Like, forget chasing all-stars. Just build through the draft and try to get really good play. I mean, like, if you surround RJ, if you like, obviously you'd want a guy who's an all star, a 10, a 10 out of 10. But you get like RJ turns into like an eight and you surround him with a bunch of guys who are like sixes or fives. Like, if you have a deep team, it makes a big difference. So, the thing I worry about with all these Knicks that, do, that have these great seasons, right? Someone's got to score, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. this year it was RJ's turn. The year before it was Randall's turn. So is it fool's goal? I think Randall's going to be all right, but is it fool's goal because somebody's got to score? Well, the sort of first off, yes. So someone has to score. So like even on a bad team, there'll be a guy that scores twenty a game. Right. You might score it on bad shooting because every team scores at least eighty points a game or ninety points a game. Like the points are just there. Someone's got to score. Right. And, and so like going, ideally, I want them to move Randall. You move Randall. I, I feel like Randall and RJ together would be a really tough guys to play together because they're both high volume, low efficiency. It's really tough to have two of those guys on the team. In theory, in theory, RJ will get better and more efficient over time. OB is a better compliment because OB is just much more efficient. His yeah. three point shooting may or may not be real, but he's really also a guy that plays around the rim and like. He generally, he's generally been pretty efficient as far as, as far as scoring because he does a lot of just dunks and like, sh- and his, sh- his shots not that bad. Uh, when like his mid range shots not that bad. I feel like he's just you. You need to surround RJ with guys that are more efficient. Mm-hmm. 
I just wish we could put all these other players on real in real organizations so we could actually see how good or bad they are because you can never tell with this stupid ass organization. Well, you never most, know. Most of the time, when the guys leave, you find out they're not very good. Um, Frank, but Frank Lakina has played a few minutes here or there in the he playoffs. He is what we thought he was. <laughs> he's ex- yeah, he's exactly like there are people out there being like, "Oh my God, can the Knicks gave up on this guy?" No, he's exactly what we thought he was. He's a guy who could really only play defense. He's a yeah. pretty good defender, um, but he's like he's a bench guy that you use in like certain moments when you need a guy to play really good defense. Yeah, you need a guy come in and shut someone down for five to ten minutes. That's I mean, it. last year the Knicks probably should have used him a lot more on Trey instead of just like just at the end of a game that mattered. But uh, either way, he's a very very limited offensive player. There are not many guys in the NBA who play major minutes who cannot play offense. Right. That, that, that are not a center at the very least. Uh, okay, so who you got, uh, Dallas or Golden State? Dallas or Golden State? Um, I think. Well, I guess you know you'd pick it based on who who is the best player in the series. Is Steph Curry or Luca the best player in the series? And I'm going to say Luca emerges as the best player in the series, and the uh, and Dallas goes to the finals. I got to say, I loved how Luca was just laughing in the face of everybody every time he hit a shot yes. all game. That that was just some epic trash talking. I loved it. He also they, they built the team there that like all play they all play serious defense. Yeah. So it's not and guys like Reggie Bullock, which I always like Reggie Bullock, he he can shoot threes and he plays serious defense. Like getting a lot of guys that can play defense and Philakini can use a little bit for his defense. I think they're they like Timmy Hardaway. I don't know how well he fits in this team because his defense is pretty weak. Um, but I think Golden State also did not look as dominant as you think they'd look against Memphis when Memphis didn't even have Jaw. Well, the injury to Golden State hurt their depth too. Don't forget that. Who who uh, was on who was on Golden State again? Um, the guard, young guard, Gary, uh, Gary Payton Jr. Gary Payton uh, Jr. Iguodala and Weissman are all injured. Right. Okay. But well, Junior's is, injury hurt. That was Gary, that, that that crushed them a little bit. That's the only one that married Gary Payton. The other ones did not matter. Um, and Gary Payton's a hell of a defender. But uh, I, I, you would have thought Steph Curry would have some really big games. He did not have any huge games. I don't know. I, I think uh, this Dallas, they made it figure something out. Who, well, I guess who, Green, who, Green's going to guard uh, Dodgers, right? You would think, right? They're going to throw him at him a little bit. You think so? He always guards these big guys. They seem to throw it. I don't know who they're going to. He's tough to guard. He's the big mismatch. I don't know who they're going to throw at. You know what I knew Phoenix was done? When? When Aiton was trying to guard Doncic, and Doncic backed him up all the way under the basket and then scored. Like, if if you have their point guard backing up your center, you're done. That's it. So I think they have to use some guy with length. Um, Yeah, because you can't have Curry doing it. Clay, I don't Obviously know. Not Curry. I don't know if he's back up to defensive speed to deal with uh, Doncic. Like you know, he missed two years. He's not what he used to be defensively. They're gonna um, have a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble with Luca. Yeah, I mean, you could try Kuminga, but he's not that experienced. Uh, it's gonna be. He's gonna be a tough matchup. Um, on the on the other hand, on Dal- and as far as Dallas, who's guarding Curry? But Curry's just very hard to guard no matter what. Yeah, but they all, everyone on Dallas is, I don't know how they were seventh this year in defense when, like, it seems like I, Hardaway must have been dragging them down because you got Bullock, Finney Smith is a good defender. Uh, well, I think that, I think the second half of the year, they were one of the best defensive teams in the NBA. I think they had, like, just, they, they had, like, a very mediocre start to the year. Mm-hmm. And like, I guess post Porzingis trade, their defense became, like, locked down. Interesting how that worked out. Yeah. Um, okay. So the other side. Right now, by the way, the Celtic. Are you guys take? Can I tell you the score? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I'm, I'm just I'm just gonna jump to the game, but I'm not gonna. I don't need to, need to like watch it from the beginning. Um, the Celtics are up 43-32 on the Heat. Um, the Celtics also had a weird season where halfway through the season you were like, they were like, what is this team doing? Like this team is just like going nowhere, and now they they're they have a very good chance of going to the NBA Finals. They just figured something out halfway through the season. They don't have uh, Al Horford or Marcus Smart tonight. That's a, that's two big guys to lose. Horford also had like, yeah, he, he had that one game last series. We were like, where the hell did they fight? Like he just like, he was like rejuvenated for that one game. Well, Horford should come back, right? It's COVID, right? Yes. Yeah. Horford. His third yeah. time this season getting COVID. <laughs> what, 
<laughs> You're like, dude. Um, Going to the strip not, clubs. Not that you have to wear a mask all the time, but what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I know, three times seems like a lot. <laughs> it's um, a hat trick for Al Horford. <laughs> but, um, great. Um, what's his name? Williams. Uh, that was a big, 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 big. big yeah, holy. What's his first name again? Grant. Why am I? Grant, yes. He was unbelievable in game seven. You're like, hey, Grant. Once Williams. in a lifetime for him in that game, though. He like, missed that, first, those numbers he never missed, come. He missed his first five shots, and I thought they were going to pull him, and then he just started hitting them, and then it, it clicked, and he was he was fine after that. I mean, the strategy of leaving him open throughout the game did not work out that well for the Bucks. The Bucks also, what did they hit, like, three threes the whole, the whole game? Yeah, they were like— I think he out he out-threed them. Yeah, there himself. was something like four for 33 at one point. It was it was insane. And, yeah, he hit seven, and the Bucks' entire team hit four through the whole game. I don't know. I mean, like, sometimes you're just off on threes, but, like, it was just crazy how big. Like, the Bucks should obviously have a bunch of guys around Giannis who could shoot three, and they do have guys that, like, kind of could shoot a three. Like, I, I think Milwaukee losing Middleton really hurt. That's them. what I was about to say. Middleton being out, I'm not saying it would have been different, but – him I being think, out, is, been, he's a big piece. It went to seven right. without Middleton. I think they would have won with Middleton. I mean, Middleton's their second best player. I mean, yeah. arguably, yep. say Drew, Drew is better, but like, like all the other guys were talking the injuries. Pretty close. Those aren't right. that big of a deal. Middleton's a huge injury. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, either way, Grant Williams, who I think he was like a he was a late first round pick. He's developing into a really good player for them, and he had a he played awesome. The uh, Pritchard played awesome. So what do you guys think? Heat or Celtics? What's going to happen? I, I do have to say, I think it's interesting that the Heat are starting Struess, which uh, the Celtics waived. Yeah. It's like a revenge factor. Yeah. I remember, speaking of Deuce McBride, I remember when Deuce McBride, his numbers in the G League were, like, awesome. And someone was like, they're like, the G League numbers don't matter. That guy, Max Struess, dropped 51 in the G League. Like, and he sucks. And now he's a... Uh, He's starting on a team that might go to the finals. Wow. Well, I, I think I'm coaching and GM are smart. It's also why I respect the Heat. Um, I respect them so much because they said, hey, Duncan Robinson, here's $20 million. And then they were like, hey, hey, you know what? You're just not as good as this guy we found in the G League, so you're just not playing. Sorry. Got to respect them for benching him like that for all that money. Yeah. yeah, it's just like, we're just going to play the best players and just we'll see how it goes. That's, Pat, contract, that's Pat Riley. You know that. That is how you're supposed to do a team. It's just your, your goddamn, whoever's better, he plays. Also, the, the Heat are missing Kyle Lowry. It doesn't seem to really matter that they're missing. Kyle Lowry was, it was a huge acquisition for them. And uh, I don't know, how much better are they really with Lowry? I think they're better with a healthy Lowry, but yeah, when he tried to fair. come in like half injured – for the yeah, it's not, in the playoffs. not optimal. Yeah, it's, it's also when you bring in like 37 year old point guards, they're just not going to be healthy, so they're not going to last long. They and this guy, uh, Gabe Vincent, like I think he's also from New York, he's from like Brooklyn or something. Like that right? Am I, am I wrong about this? I think you're right. He's from like the New York not area. Sure. He, he's freaking tough as hell. I also another guy they found in the G League 40% of their starting lineup are guys they found in the G League, and they're pretty and they, they're a pretty good, pretty darn good team. So, you know, Dallas is the only team out of the top five in defense out of the four teams left. So I'm surprised Boston. I guess Boston had such a bad start because Boston's been playing some amazing defense. I think They're Boston was five. was the top team second half of the year. Yeah, yeah. Defense. No, I'm saying uh, Dallas was the lowest ranked uh, defending team out of the top four left. Oh, they were the oh, lowest. lowest. I thought you said they were the only one in the top five. No, they were the only oh. one not in the top five. I think they finished seventh. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So last year, the Knicks had, like, the best defense in the NBA, and they couldn't make it out of the first round. This year, all the best defenses are playing in the, in the conference finals. Yeah. Well, they got rid of all their good defensive players and tried to get three-point shooters. Yeah. Oops. Who didn't really? Yeah, the Knicks, tra- <laughs> the Knicks are like, shoot. And now defense, everyone's going defense. How do we be – how can we be behind the curve on this one? <laughs> I mean, the Knicks, they're always chasing the, the tail. Fournier shot Knicks- well. It was just – the whole team was just awkward. The Knicks are going to be like next year, like, hey, we're 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 ahead of everything. We know where the NBA is going. We're only going to go with players that are under six foot tall. That's where it's going. You're going to so, get a bunch, bunch of uh, firefighters, like uh, JJ Redick said. I think um, I'm going Celtics this series. I, just, I, I I bet the Celtics the last round to win the Eastern Conference, so I, I, I'm rooting for that. 
I mean, I if think you're going have... like the best player usually comes out of it. I would take Tatum over Butler. Tatum, Tatum's on fire. He's uh he's already having a great night tonight. What does he have tonight? He has nineteen. He has, uh, uh, nineteen on nine for fourteen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Tatum... five assists, and we're not even through at halftime yet. And also, the Celtics just are deeper as far as, like. So let's just say Tatum. Tatum has an off night. Jalen Brown is pretty darn good. Like who? Who's the second best player in Miami after Butler? Maybe Hero. <laughs> I mean, Hero can go off. I guess Bam. Bam. Yeah, I. I like what something. I mean, the Celtics have just they have two star players, which beats one star player. You know, what? in another year, I would have said Oladipo, but I don't know if he's all the way back yet. Uh, yeah, I don't think he's all the way back yet. Oh, he's not even close to being. He all has way flashes, back. but yeah. I don't think um, I'm scared of him. I think he's. But we forget how good he was at one point, you know, yeah. a couple of years ago. Who, who's the, who's who's the deeper team here? Boston. Yeah. Without Larry, Boston. Um. Yeah, I th- I know you said Larry, but I thought you said Larry, and I was like, you mean Bird? No, I met Larry uh, Jack Tripper's uh, neighbor. Um. I mean, okay, really so you have Harrow Oladipo, and I guess you could dust off uh, Duncan Robinson. Wait, hey, by the way, would it be? I, I didn't even. I this I heard on the Bill Simmons podcast pointed out. If the Heat and Dallas go to the finals, how weird would that be? Like, I, like the third time this, like in We've the last twenty that, years. Oh, yeah, we seen yeah. that two times. Oh six eleven. Uh, oh six eleven, and now and now this year, that would be so yeah. crazy. With like yeah. pretty much different rosters each time. Completely different rosters, just different teams, different everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is are there any common players? Was Dirk on both? Dirk was on both, and Wade was on both. Wade was on both, right? But now, yeah. But the, well, pretty much the entire surrounding. Maybe you, Donis Haslam, was he on both? Maybe. Maybe. But like, I think I think like if you ever I think three hundred years from now, you Donis Haslam will still be on the roster. Yeah. <laughs> but like pretty much the whole rest of the. The supporting casts were different. Oh, it was turned over. Yeah, yeah, and they were really just different teams. Like obviously, like the 06, like the Miami identity was the the Shaq, um, Shaq Wade. The eleven right. team was the LeBron Dream Team. Right. And Dallas, you had the uh, first of all the Dirk, the 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 deep, such a deep team, the one that won the finals, and the uh, the 06 Dallas team. Who was what was their like identity? I forget. That was, uh, was it like, Michael Finley. Michael Finley. Uh, uh, who I think Jason Terry was on too. Jason Terry was on there. Yeah, that was that. That was I, I don't remember. That wasn't that a memorable team they beat. No, it wasn't. I mean, obviously the team, the Dirk team that went to the finals, I'll just a little more memorable. The eleven right? team, well, because we were rooting for them so hard because no one wanted the Heat to win. And they had a really fun roster. They had so many guys. They like you would like like Jason Kidd at the end. Yeah, they had Sean, kids. Sean they had Tyson Marion. Chandler. They had uh, Sean Marion. I, I Sean Marion. Who was Correa. Yeah, they had a lot of players. I think they had Peja all the way at the end of the bench. They had Peja. Yeah. It was also the first year of the uh, of the this amazing, but the LeBron team. Yep. And so, like, you just wanted to see them lose so badly. I remember rooting. I, I don't think I've ever rooted so much for a team that wasn't the Knicks. I was that so year. I was so into that Dallas team just for that series. Like, yep. I knew that roster from up like. I knew the whole roster for that series. Like I was just, I was, I was. I remember watching it in bar, like at a bar. Like it was, I was so into that finals. I'm not even like we're not even cheating on the like we know the guys. Like we're, I, I'm not cheating. I, the only thing I've cheated on is just looking at the box score tonight. I'm, but I'm, I'm like, I, I obviously I watch the play the play the finals every year. But I'm trying to think of what finals were you the most into that? that obviously the Knicks, forgetting the, the finals the Knicks were in. What finals have you been like? I'm thinking about like I was really into Golden the, State uh, Cleveland the first time. Yeah, that was really awesome. I was gonna say the one with Clay got injured also with Golden State versus Toronto. That was just like a very interesting like you like well Durant. Yeah, that was a good series. You know what playoff game I remember the most, and it bothers me. And they showed it last round too, where Steve Nash got checked into the freaking scorers table. Mm-hmm. That that game angered me so much because I really wanted the Suns to win that year. Yeah, me too. Uh, and I thought they got so dicked out of that championship. Oh, oh I, for a second I thought you said finals game. I was like Suns. I, I, no, I, it was a playoff game. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, they should have been. They should have won that year. They should have won. There were some teams that really got screwed. I mean, they got screwed. The uh, the Mike Bibby Sacramento Kings got screwed. Yes. 
there were some like really good teams that you're like cannot figure out how they never won a title uh during their their era. Those can. Kings teams were actually rootable. Tim, I wanted them to beat the Lakers a lot. Tim Donnie they were, and company, that counts. Yes, yes. Um there were there were we there were real good reasons why they, they did not actually. All right, win. before we uh, go, Andrew wants to know, would you do CP three for Randall? Yes. Uh, sure. I would not. So basically, I do think there's something about addition through subtraction thing for just getting off. I think Randall does not fit in this roster going forward. Just moving him would be very helpful. If you were assuming Chris Paul is injured, like his contract gets ridiculous from here. And it's, it's like twice as much money as they're going to pay Randall. Yeah. Um, he, he does make the team better in the sense of like guys will listen to me. Like he'll, uh-huh. I mean, he'll make guys better. Um, All we've been wanting is a point guard, right? I mean, the last time we had a 40-year-old point guard, basically, at the end of his career, we won four Jackson. games. Oh, I was just like Jason Kidd. Uh, oh. yeah. He's pretty much my least favorite player in the league, so no. I, no, I, Harden's worse. Well, Harden, yeah, Harden's, hate... Harden's my least favorite, but Chris Paul is like a close second. I mean, how happy are you that Harden is out of the playoffs? Ben Simmons is out of the playoffs. Chris Paul's out of the playoffs. All the guys, LeBron didn't even make the playoffs. Durant yeah, like, is out of the what, playoffs. What bad guys are left? Like, Marcus, what guys do you really hate? Or like? Marcus Smart's no the one. only one that I dislike at all. Who? Which one? Marcus, Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart, Because he, yeah. he, flop, he flops all the time. I always root against the floppers. But generally speaking, I don't dislike anyone who's left in the playoffs. Um, all the guys have been kicked out, basically. Uh, I just, there are all the bad guys, guys are gone. All the bad yeah. guys are gone. Um, yeah, I'm just so happy to see Hard. I mean, the whole Hard and fiasco. Like, the fact that he's like, like, like Philly's like, yeah, you you weren't very good. And he's like, so that'll be two hundred fifty million dollars. Um, you guys just want to give me the contract when you guys want to? Well, you want? Yeah, yeah. I want. I want a max. I want a max deal. I mean, I'm. Yeah, I gotta sign it now before I I get even worse at basketball. Just going on Twitter and typing in Harden and watching all the funny tweets. It's it's so much fun. He so bad. Holy crap! Did he fall apart? He fell off a cliff. If you're Philly, like. Let's just say he's like, I want a max deal, or like, let's say he's like, I'll settle for five years, two hundred million dollars. I mean, something still insane. Um, do you do it? No. And he's like, if you don't give it to me, I'm walking, which he can do. Mm-hmm. Do you walk? Do you let him walk? Cut your losses, yeah. I wouldn't but then you, him but, anything. But then you're like, Embiid, like we did all this stuff, and now you're like, we're wasting your like your prime. They didn't trust the process. You think you're gonna waste his prime any less having him there? No, yeah. I mean, Max, they nailed the Max pick. Max looks pretty good. There's two things that hurt them. The Fultz pick, that never worked out. That, I mean, could you imagine how good they would have been if they just took Tatum? Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, And and the other one is uh, not keeping Jimmy Butler? No. no. What they did, the the way the Ben Simmons thing worked. I mean, they uh, just, they they both, both sides foobarred that. Yeah, I did like when Jimmy Butler left the court. Um, he was like, he made some comment like Tobias Harris over me. <laughs> well, Jimmy Butler losing Jimmy Butler was bad because he was a key part of that. I he, comeback, they they, they yeah. chose they chose Tobias Harris over him. I I think they'd be a better team if they just kept Jimmy Butler. Yeah, well, well, look where Jimmy Butler is. He's constantly in the Eastern Conference Finals every year, right? Whether they're in the bubble or not. Yeah, yeah he's a pretty good player. Um, and Harris is like a contract they wouldn't mind moving. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't feel bad for Philly. I, I'm not a big Embiid guy. I mean, he's a good player, but he annoys me. You know, he's another aw- bad guy. You know, what's going to be awesome is when uh, they're trying to figure out the ben, the uh, the James Harden thing, and they're like, "What should we do? This is a terrible situation." And James Harden kind of taps him on the shoulder, and he's like, "Hey, hey uh, oh, what, what's up? What's up?" Uh, and they're like, Embiid's like, "Yeah, so I want to be traded," and they're like, "Well, you have a you have a long term deal." Yeah, this, uh, Harden told me you're allowed to be traded whenever, and this is not going to play here anymore. Yeah, <laughs> who's going to pick up Harden if Philly doesn't? Because he's not, Philly's not going to pay that money. No way. Who's going to pay? What dumb team is going to pick him up? Because he's done. You could tell. Washington. Mm. Or Houston. <laughs> I mean, Washington went from uh, Wall to Westbrook, and now it's do, Porzingis. By the way, <laughs> Porzingis. Do we yeah. do we also have to pretend Daryl Morey is a genius? No, I'll, he's a risk taker. I'll give him that. Yeah, he is a risk taker. But um, 
he seems to have taken some risks that have not worked out. Well, would would the Sixers have gone as far if they kept Ben Simmons this year? Um, you mean losing in the second round? Yeah, sure. Why not? Well, they took him. They took Miami to Game Seven, right? I mean, with yeah. an injured Embiid. True. I mean, uh, like Curry would have been better than Harden. They would have had Seth Curry, who would have contributed more than Harden. Yeah. And Drummond could have spelled. Uh, if Embiid didn't get hurt, you think they won that? They win that series? Not with Harden playing like that. No. Um, yeah. I also think uh, literally every offer that was on the table for Ben Simmons, besides the James Harden trade, would have gotten them to the conference finals. <laughs> that <laughs> might be true. Yeah. Uh, 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 Tyrese Halliburton, uh, CJ McCollum, any of the offers out there. CJ McCollum. That would have been awesome. If they got CJ McCollum, they would be. They'd probably be in the finals. Look what happened to the Pelicans. Pelicans looked pretty good with him. Like it was just like literally the worst, like the, the worst way you could use this trade asset, like yep. just completely screwed them. Yeah, um, that, ugh, he sucks. Can't stand him. All right, I'm so are, glad he's getting his at a time, guys. Oh, I know, I know. Uh, we are NY Knicks Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon. NY Knicks Podcast at Gmail dot com is our email. Uh, subscribe on iTunes and Spotify and all that other stuff. And uh, we will be back soon. And uh, in the meantime, we'll probably be doing an episode of our comedy podcast, The Brink of Sanity. You can check that out. What is going on in the background, Jay? Uh, That's not my room, but uh, I almost got through promoting all the stuff without you interrupting this time. Thank you. What was what was the? Oh, is that? Oh, Martin, is that your family? Jesus Christ, Mark! Just the 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 noise was my stupid ass kids. Just just let it roll. (laughs) Just let it roll. It's okay. We have some background noise. We don't have to disrupt the whole show. <laughs> it's so much better if you, if you just point it out. But I think I hear my kids again. I'm just going to talk over the closing again. I love when we talk it over. Let's, Jay let's hates when we talk over it. Let's disrupt the whole song because there's a sound in the background. So, so Jay, can you keep playing it? Martin, can you tell us more about the recorder concert? <laughs> No. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. Can you get kid, what you get to play the recorder over the show? Uh, I have a whole podcast that's just recorder. I, I told Jay this before. Uh, my son will only play the recorder as a way to control the signal. I respect that. <laughs> recorder. Andrew said we should do detailed analysis during the closing song. <laughs> we, we went pretty deep on the playoffs at the end there mm-hmm. um so we're back when it gets to the finals i guess or the jet you we need to do the june the, the first week of june right yeah okay so we'll we do, do break do, again soon do, yeah break in the meantime martin you want to do break again with us soon yeah jay will text me and i will say yes <laughs> okay maybe next week jay yeah. Uh oh. What happened to the Mets? Someone's texting me well, about the Mets. That is it's three. Uh, it's three two. That is my cue to go. Once it's three two. The Mets. Oh, they have... won. They won. Three they won. That that was game one. There's two games today. Oh, that's right because of the rain out yesterday. Yeah, yeah. They won. They, they won. They won. The... Yeah. They have. Th- uh, it's bottom of the eighth inning, and I'm gonna go. Just gonna turn this on right now. All right. Cool. All right. All right. Thanks okay, for guys. guys. I'll talk to yeah. you. Good night, Jay. <laughs> now that we knocked you out with baseball talk. Wait, wait. They might have got a big hit. I think I they think... got the run. I think they got the running. Wait, yep. hang on, hang on. My, my buddy Chris. The play, the play, the play. Shit, shit. No, they got it.